Let's talk about how to find the roots of a complex number. We'll start with an example. Find the cube roots of 8i. I want to begin this by setting up an equation. z cubed equals 8i. Remember, the cube root of 8i would be a number that when cubed gives you 8i. So all the cube roots have to satisfy this equation. So I'm looking for solutions to this equation. Now let's assume that the, the cube roots z are of the form r cosine theta plus i sine theta. That is, let's assume they're all in trig form. If they are, then I can just cube them using de Moivre's theorem. And I also want to write 8i in trig form. It's actually pretty easy because 8i, the point is 8 units away from the origin, so the modulus is 8. And its argument, well, we have a lot of choices, but the, the most obvious choice is pi over 2. But let's remember that we could also add 2 pi to that, and that would also be a choice. We could add another 2 pi, and that would be a choice. Another 2 pi, and so on. So let's keep that in mind. But right now, I'll write cosine of pi over 2 plus i sine pi over 2. All right, let's expand this, or let's, let's simplify this using Debov's theorem. We get r cubed cosine of, remember you multiply the argument by 3, cosine 3 theta plus i sine 3 theta. And that equals 8 cosine pi over 2 plus i sine pi over 2. Now, for these two sides to be equal, I need r cubed to equal 8. And I need 3 theta to equal pi over 2. Now remember, it doesn't just have to be pi over 2. It could be pi over 2 plus 2 pi, or pi over 2 plus 4 pi. Pi over 2 plus 2n pi, any even multiple of pi. So first of all, this r cubed equals 8 means r has to be 2. Right? Remember, I'm looking for a real number answer. That's, that's going to be the length, the modulus of my roots. All of them will have a modulus of 2. What about the argument? I divide both sides by 3, and I get pi over 6 plus 2n pi over 3. When n equals 0, I'll get pi over 6. So one argument I could use is pi over 6. Let's start with that one. So one root will be z equals the modulus of 2 times cosine of pi over 6 plus i sine pi over 6. Cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. So this is 2 times root 3 over 2 oops, plus. And sine of pi over 6 is a half, so i times a half. 2 times root 3 over 2 is root 3. 2 times a half is 1, so I get i. Sorry about that. And that's one of my roots, root 3 plus i. Now I get a second root if I let n equal 1. If n equals 1, then I'm adding 2 pi over 3 to pi over 6. 2 pi over 3 is the same as 4 pi over 6. So 4 pi over 6 plus pi over 6 is 5 pi over 6. That's my new argument. So z equals 2 cosine 5 pi over 6 plus i sine 5 pi over 6. And I get 2 times the cosine of 5 pi over 6 is minus root 3 over 2. And the sine of pi, 5 pi over 6 is a half, again. So I get minus root 3 plus i. That's my second root. My third root, I get when n equals 2. When n equals 2, I have 4 pi over 3. I'm adding 4 pi over 3, which is the same as adding 8 pi over 6. Pi over 6 plus 8 pi over 6 is 9 pi over 6. And 9 pi over 6 is the same as 3 pi over 2. So z equals 2 cosine 3 pi over 2 plus i sine 3 pi over 2. And this one's easy. 3 pi over 2 is this downward direction. The cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, and the sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. So I get 2 times 0 plus i times negative 1. In other words, negative 2i. And it turns out that I'm done. 
if I calculated for n equals 3, I'd end up getting the exact same root I got here. If I calculated for n equals 4, I'd get this one. n equals 5, I'd get this one. And I'd keep cycling through these over and over again. It turns out that there are only three distinct roots, three distinct cube roots of any complex number. The number of roots equals the index of the root. So a fifth, the number of fifth roots will be 5. The number of seventh ro roots will be 7. So just keep that in mind when you're solving these. You'll only get three distinct cube roots of a number. And in addition to that, let's take a look at the graph of these numbers. I've plotted them out here. Notice, all three of them have a modulus of 2. They all have the same distance from 0. And they're all symmetrical. They have three-fold rotational symmetry. The angle between consecutive roots is 120 degrees. This always happens with roots. They always have this symmetry, and they always have the same length. This is something to keep in mind when you're solving for the roots of a complex number.